This is Lucifera. Shindo Entropy here. Today we'd like to discuss what you might say is the future of those of us who maybe you could call the called and the chosen. They reference these people in the Bible as saints. We will be using Bible verses, so those of you who have a problem with the Bible, understandably so, you need to look at this from a general perspective. Because it's in the Bible doesn't mean it's a lie, of course. Because it's in the Bible doesn't mean it's true either. If anything that we say, we want to convey the idea of being open-minded. And open-minded enough to even look at a book that you might even despise and find some pearls of wisdom in it. What you find in the Bible often in regards to those who are called the saints, in regards to those who come to the Christ and ask him questions, is a very simple, straightforward question. What's in it for me? Why should I do this? Well, we'd like to address that head on today. Those who make it are those who endure to the end and who make it into the golden age. They'll be the ones to be ki uh, kings and priests. That's what the Bible calls them. This is what the Bible uh, says about this. Revelation 5, 10. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The Bible has many verses about becoming kings and queens. Uh, or priest, whatever, whatever uh, noun they use to describe those who are in rulership in the new world. The new age, the messianic age, the age of Aquarius. Our problem with many Christians and the Christian church in general, that is those who propagate these lies, is that they tell people that the only thing you have to do is believe in something in order for this to come true. As we sit here and read out of the Bible, we can show you that even the Bible is not a witness to that. That whatever Christians have become in the last 200 years or so, they are not Bible-believing Christians because they believe in this nonsense of a rapture. They believe that everything that they have or will be given will just be handed to them and they won't have to do anything for it. True wisdom only comes through suffering. And only through suffering do you gain anything of any kind of spiritual or secular hierarchy. I'm not interested in hierarchy myself. And Lucy and I aren't in this for our big prize at the end. And if you are in it for that, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. Lucy and I do what we do because it is inherent in our nature to do it all the while being condemned by the very people who believe that they are the ones who are propagating the truth of the Christ when they know nothing of the true Christ. I want to read a verse in Revelation uh, chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So this verse is basically telling you you're going to go through much tribulation. You'll have to endure to the end. And going through, and going through a lot of these hardships in the end, you will receive the crown, the crown of life. Now, what I personally see from many of these Christian preachers on YouTube is that they haven't endured any kind of hardship, and they certainly aren't enduring it now. They have been given their reward. They have gotten their reward. 
The Bible itself speaks against these kind of people, these Pharisees that have already been given their earthly reward. They're not going to get any kind of reward in a new world. Believe it or not, I don't hate these people, and I certainly don't hate their followers, even the ones that come against me. But I certainly don't pity them either. And they will get, just as all of us, they will get what they deserve in the end. This is the reason why we decided to do this video today, was for those of you who are listening to realize you have to have the endurance and patience. You have to realize that you're doing this for a reason. And the reason is, yes, inherently, instinctively, within ourselves, innately, we are who we are. and We're doing what we do because we can't do anything else. In regards to the verse I just read, um, we will be going through much um, hardships, tribulation. Uh, there's going to be those who come against us. And they are now. And it will get to the point what this verse is even saying right here. So going through all these hardships, just know in the end, we're going to come out the victors. We're going to win in the end. We, we, are, we already are. But um, once you endure all this, just know uh, you're going to receive a crown of life. And by enduring to the end, by enduring to the end, you will be given um, the authority in the new world. What Paul writes about, I don't agree with in general, as most of you who know me and have listened to our videos before know. However, you can find strength in his resolve. And I'd like to share this passage. This is quite a bit from the Bible, so yes, I know some of you don't like hearing the Bible, but take it in perspective. We are discussing enduring all the hardships and pains that we endure here in this world. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we have Paul pretty much naming off the things that he has endured for this witnessing that he was doing that he truly believed in. Regardless of anything you think about Paul, he did believe in what he was saying. Starting on verse 5, for I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. Even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted? Because I preach the gospel of God to you free of charge. Here is the crux of many, if not most, Christians. Problem is pride. Humble yourself. Uh, verse 8, I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister you, to you. And when I was present with you in need, I was burdened to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came to Macedonia supplied, and in everything I kept myself from being burdensome to you, and I will keep myself. Paul worked for a living. He was a tent maker. Hint, hint, hint to you Christians who are making millions of dollars off of this. Hint. Hint, hint, you've already been rewarded. Verse 10, And the truth of Christ is in me. No one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Asadia. Why? Because I do not love you? God knows. What Paul is saying is that people are, are boastful and full of pride, some of the people who have been preaching what they call the gospel at that point. And he is going to act like one of them, showing them how foolish it is. Verse 12, and the Christians talk about the devil being prideful. Why don't you Christians look at yourselves instead of making judgments? If you are prideful, you are of the devil, your own devil. Okay, verse 12. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Those who boast... Those who have nice thousands of dollars of dental work and gold watches, listen to what the Apostle Paul says. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself 
transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think of me a fool, if otherwise I at least receive me as a fool, that I may also boast a little. What I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in the confidence of boasting, seeking that I may boast according to the flesh, I will boast. For you put up with fools gladly, since you yourself are wise. For you put up with one being you into bondage. If one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face, to our shame, I say, that we are too weak for that. But whoever, anyone is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Here he goes on to talk about everything that he has done. Uh, shipwrecked. He, he, he goes on. I would suggest to anyone to read this passage themselves. Of course... If you're interested, you can see all the things that Paul went through. He's gone, went through a lot for what he w believed was witnessing the truth. And that's the only interest that I have in showing this to you. Now, if I may be so bold and foolish and boastful, I gave up everything to do what I'm doing. I'm getting a lot back now and even more now that I have Lucy on my side and I on hers. But there was a time where I gave up everything. I gave up my life. I was married, going to grad school, had two kids. I still have the two kids, but I hardly ever get to see them. Gave up my house, everything, if I may be so boastful. The point is, this doesn't come easy for any of us. And if you have too much on your mind about how you're going to sit in judgment of others and how you're going to be this, this lofty queen or king, you need to learn to put those things out of your mind. Because first comes the sacrifice. First you sacrifice to get your position in a new world, in a new age. Those of you that have the gift of understanding and the ability to relay these things to other people should find yourself interested in giving of the Spirit, getting involved with matters of the world shouldn't be what you are interested in. Those of us who have the gift to reach out to many people and have them listening the message should be one constructed to bring about an understanding of the new world, of the new age, of our place in it, and our responsibilities for it. All these things in the world, put out of your mind. Put, out, put all these things out of your mind. Fear, um, sensationalism, for, don't worry about all this end of the world stuff, all the things that people are talking about. The New World Order, reptilians, the end of the world, the aliens are coming to destroy us. Forget all that. Be Ease your mind. Be at peace within yourself. Focus on transforming your inner being. Okay. Focus on uh, transmuting base metals into gold. Don't concern yourself so much with conspiracy because who cares what lies they're telling us and who cares if we find out this truth, the only real truth that we have is the truth that is within us, the truth of our our own nature. Don't worry about conspiracies. Most of them are nonsense and many of them all of them are not going to do you any good to know. Beware of the ego. Beware of people patting you on the back and telling you how great you're doing because of your venture into those things of this world, the secular world. In order to be kings and queens of the new world, you must endure. Stay true and pure. This is Entropy 666 signing off. Jindo. This is Lucifera. We will see you again soon. Bye.